This is Neil Pitori. I'm going to talk in this segment about bandwidth efficiency and comparing different modulations in terms of bandwidth efficiency. As you know, bandwidth is one of our most limited resources. And so making sure that we're able to send high bit rates over the given bandwidth that we have on our channel is very important. So when we consider a modulation, not only are we considering the probability of error, but we're also considering the bandwidth. And the primary way that we consider bandwidth is in terms of bandwidth efficiency. Um, so we define bandwidth efficiency as uh, eta, and it's defined as the bit rate, RB for bit rate, and divided by the total bandwidth used by our signal. So let's first look at PSK and QAM. They both have the same formula for BT. It is that BT is equal to 1 plus alpha divided by the symbol rate. And the symbol rate itself is uh, a multiple of the bit rate. It's log base 2 of m times Tb. That's because if it takes T sub s to send one symbol, and that symbol conveys log base 2m bits, then you're effectively sending a bit every uh, Tb, which is Tb is equal to T sub s divided by log base 2 of m. So this is the bandwidth in terms of the bit rate, because 1 over Tb is RB, and now I can write the bandwidth efficiency as RB divided by this BT, which is 1 plus alpha divided by log base 2 of m times RB. The RBs cancel, and we're left with log base 2 of m divided by 1 plus alpha. So for example, if I have a, a square root raised cosine pulse shape with an alpha of 0 0.5, and I may have, let's say, m equals um, 64 square quam. Okay, so what is the bandwidth efficiency? Well, eta is log base 2 of m over 1 plus 0 0.5, or 6 divided by 1.5, or just 4. Okay, that means um, that every hertz of bandwidth that I have, I can send 4 bits. It's important, I should say very specifically that RB is bits per hertz, uh, sorry, bits per second, and BT is hertz, which is one over seconds. So the units here will read it as bits per second per hertz. But you can keep in mind that uh, bits per second divided by one over second, the second units cancel and it's actually a unitless quantity but we will read it as bits per second per hertz to, to, to remind ourselves of what the number means okay so this 4 is bits per second per hertz okay for FSK we've got a slightly different expression um, remember, our bandwidth um, is related to m in the following way. It's m minus 1 times delta f plus the bandwidth of our pulse shape. Um, in the book, in my notes, it says 2b. This is where b is the one-sided bandwidth. of the pulse shape.
for FSK, sometimes we have um, different pulse shapes than square root raised cosine. But if we use, if we assume um, square root raised cosine pulse shapes, then this 2b is equal to 1 plus alpha divided by the symbol period. And we have to assume that we know what delta f is. You remember it's a, um, often a multiple of 1 over 2 times t sub s, and we typically use 1 over t sub s for non-coherent reception. And in that case, then we have the bandwidth dt is equal to m minus 1 divided by t sub s plus this 2b, which we replace by 1 plus alpha over t sub s. In other words, m plus alpha divided by t sub s. Okay, so this is going to result in um, eta being equal to rb divided by the bandwidth, which is m plus alpha divided by t sub s, which again is log base 2m of t sub b. And this 1 over t sub b in the denominator is rb, so rb and 1 over t b cancel, and we're left with log base 2 of m on top divided by the m plus alpha in the denominator. So you can see that the bandwidth efficiency is going to be lower because of this m plus alpha in the denominator. Okay, so let's plot the results. This plot from the Rice book has the x-axis be the eb over n naught. That is, here it's the eb over n naught required to achieve a probability of bit error of 10 to the minus 6th. Okay, so a good, a very low probability of bit error. So it's a high fidelity digital communication system. On the y-axis, it's the bits per second per hertz. And this is the typical way we can compare modulations in terms of bandwidth efficiency. So in the squares and this solid blue line, we've got mQAM, mQAM from 2, 4, 16, 32. This is using square QAM for m equals 4, 16, 64, and so on, and the rectangular versions for the m equals 32 and the odd powers of 2. For MPSK, we have uh, the circles and the solid blue line. And of course, the QPSK is both MQAM and MPSK. So in terms of bandwidth efficiency bits per second per hertz, if I look at BPSK or 2QAM, then I'm going to have a very low bandwidth efficiency. I'm going to be able to get less than one bit per second per hertz into my channel. If I go to QPSK, that doubles. If I go to M equals 16, that um, again doubles. My bandwidth efficiency is going to go up as I increase M. But that slope of the increasing bandwidth efficiency is not as good with MPSK. You saw that it requires more EB over N naught to achieve the given probability of error in MPSK. So that's why this figure looks the way it does for MPSK. This dashed line is the uh, Shannon capacity. Uh, it's kind of a theoretical limit that we're going to talk about in a future segment.